Something in the air? Mmm, you bet. Excitement. Because four exciting new shows go on the air tonight, starting right now. ABC brings out its first Monday night surprise package labeled Dashiell Hammett's Fat Man. The fat man is the stalwart detective whose huge size doesn't slow up his progress a bit when it comes to sleuthing. And speaking of detectives, you'll want to meet hard-talking Ross Dolan, played by William Gargan. His business is crime. In his words... I deal in crime, and he follows in half an hour. And then the dean of music makers, Paul Whiteman, and his new show, Forever Tops, the top tunes that will live forever. Paul Whiteman plays them on Forever Tops. And did you know that your top stage and screen laugh favorites, Jimmy and Lucille Gleason, have opened a diner? What a diner. You see, that's what we meant when we said excitement in and on the air tonight and every Monday night on ABC. Right now... Let's take a trip into adventure with Dashiell Hammett's Fat Man. Wait, 247. Fortune, danger. Who is it? The Fat Man. The American Broadcasting Company brings you Dashiell Hammett's latest and most fascinating character, the Fat Man. The hard-boiled, hard-hitting adventures of a criminologist who tips the scale at 247 pounds. Tonight's adventure, the 19th Pearl. And now, here is the Fat Man. One of the worst things about being fat is feeling thin. That extra load you carry around is something you never think about till you bump into a full-length mirror or drop a penny into a drugstore scale. Even then, you don't feel fat. The only time you really feel it is when you run into a beautiful woman. That's when the old collar kind of chokes you and your hands look big and your legs are hard to cross. That's when you're glad you've got a busy job like mine, solving crimes. This one began in Grand Central Station, right near the information center. My mother was going away for a weekend. I was there to put her on the train. You don't have to wait around till the gates open, son. I've gotten on trains before. It's all right, Ma. It's a free night for me anyway. Want some peanuts? For heaven's sake, no. I do. Be right back. Bag of peanuts, Jenny. All right. Better make it two. Here you are. Okay. Sorry, sister. I didn't mean to bump into you. It's all right. I uh, I wasn't looking where... Please. Will you do me a favor? Hmm? It's terribly important. Here. Hold this bag for me. Oh. Look, he's coming here. Who? Uh, don't let him see me. He mustn't know I'm here. Well, why not? What have you done? Nothing. I... Stand in front of me, will you? All right, quick. Put your arms around me as if you were kissing me goodbye. Say, what kind of a game is this? Please, cover my face and kiss me. Okay, sister. How's this? Hold it. Oh. How long? Oh, no. No, don't stop. Just keep your arms around me. As long as you say, baby. You know, I've heard about things like this, but I never figured it would happen to a guy like me. All right. That's enough. I wish I thought so. We ought to do this more often. I'll have to run now. He's gone. Maybe you'll be back. Oh, no. No. I mustn't miss the train. Thanks ever so much for helping me. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you going to tell no, me... No, there isn't time. But I don't even know... Okay, sister. Two ships that pass in the night. Well, that was a fond farewell. Who was it, dear? I don't know. What? Never saw her before in my life. Is that why you were kissing her? <laughs> don't make a romance out of it, Ma. <laughs> she just borrowed me for a quick hug, and that's all there was to it. Well, I don't know that it's wise to kiss strange women in station, son. Have you still got your watch? I've got more than my watch, Ma. I've still got her bag. <laughs> How do you know she's on this train, dear? I saw her duck into the car ahead. Well, leave the bag with me. 
I'll give it to her as soon as we pull out of the station. Are you kidding? Oh! Son, we're going to start in a moment. It's all right. I'll ride up to 125th Street. Just to give her back her bag? That's a good enough reason. Well, be sure you get off at 125th Street. Oh, we're moving. Okay, Ma. I'll take the bag up to her now. And... <sighs> What's the matter? That dame's on the platform. I'm getting off. Careful, son. Watch your step. Sure, sure. See you later. Bye. Good evening, beautiful. Oh, Oh, you frightened me. I didn't the last time. You want to play some more? I don't think so. Well, don't go away. I still got your bag. Oh, well, thank you. What's this all about, kid? Who'd you knock off? I beg your pardon. You must have done something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be running away. Why not? Can't I be running away from danger? There's a man following me. The guy on that train? How did you know he was on it? Simple arithmetic. You got on to give him the slip. He must have followed you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have got off. That's exactly what happened. What else happened? I don't know what you mean. Come on, kid. Tell me the truth or I won't help you. I don't know that I want you to help me. Okay, sister. I'll walk right out of the picture. Uh, No. Uh, No, wait. Changed your mind? No. The man who's been following me changed it. Huh? Huh? He's standing right over there on the platform. You'll be safe here, Miss Evans. Mm. Is this your office? Yeah. Step in. Thank you. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Every chair in this place is comfortable. Have you sampled them all? Every one. There's one thing I hate, it's sitting on hard wood. Uh, have an apple, Miss Evans? Uh, no, thanks. Mm. Awful good. <sighs> no, thanks. Well, tell me now, how long has this guy been following you? About three days. And you don't know who he is? Or what he's after? No. What do you do for a living, Miss Evans? I, um, I'm an actress. On the stage? When I'm working. Maybe I've seen you. Not in New York. I uh, haven't done anything here yet. Mm, Rich daddy? No. No daddy at all. And what keeps you in those gorgeous clothes? I have a private income. My father left me some money. Those beautiful pearls, too? (laughs) Oh, uh, these aren't real. Aren't they? Let me see them. Don't you believe me? No. Why not? Because you're not a very good liar. What? Even experienced ones take a deep breath after every lie they tell. But you've been pumping away like an iron lung. How dare you talk to me like that? Get out of here, Miss Evans. I won't take your case. You won't get it, you insufferable man. Keep going, keep going. What? Keep yelling at me. There's someone outside the door. You overbearing, conceited pig. If I were a man, I'd give you the beating of your life. That's enough. Well, what are you doing out here, mister? Nothing. I was just... Hey, come back here, you... You son of a gun, I'll make it much harder for you when I catch you. You gonna stop, you punk, or do I have to dive for you? Oh, you big ape. <sighs> I'm not as slow as I look. Well, you didn't have to tackle me. I'm sorry, old man. My old football training. Can you get up? I don't know. <sighs> there you are. Now, maybe you'll tell me what you were doing outside my door. I was keeping an eye on Miss Evans. Hmm, that's an interesting pastime. Come on back to the office and tell us why. It's my job. I'm a private detective. Well, well. Who hired you? Mrs. Stanton. Mrs. Jeffrey Stanton. The banker's wife? Yes. She wants a record of every move Miss Evans makes. Why? That's my business. Well, maybe Miss Evans has an interest in it. Miss Evans! Miss Evans, where are you? What's the matter? She's gone. Gentlemen, to see you, Mrs. Stanton. Who is it, Carl? He refused to give me his card, madam. He simply said the fat man is calling. Fat man? What do you suppose he wants? Some information, Mrs. Stanton. Good heavens. What do you mean by coming in here unannounced? But I was announced. I'm the fat man. Well, I've never had the pleasure of meeting you, and I certainly don't intend to do so now. Show him out, Carl. 
I don't think Carl is man enough, Mrs. Stanton. You'd better let me stay. What do you want? Some information about Miss Evans. I couldn't get a thing out of that clam you had following her. What clam? What are you talking about? Shall I call the police, Mrs. Stanton? No. No, I can manage this call. Very well, madam. Now then, what were you saying, Mr... Uh, I don't believe you mentioned the name. I didn't. People remember me better as the fat man. Oh. Oh, I know who you are now. Mr. Parker told me about you. Parker? The man you very nearly killed in the hall outside your office. Said you fell on him like a ton of bricks. He had no right listening outside my door. Did you really hire him to follow Miss Evans? I did. May I ask why? You shouldn't have to. I thought everybody knew I was anxious to divorce my husband. Miss Evans is just one of the grounds. One? The only one I'll need. You see, Mr. Stanton made the mistake of giving her a necklace. What? Quite an expensive one, in fact. Matched pearls. Oh, I see. You seem disappointed. In Mr. Stanton? No, in Miss Evans. You're not a friend of hers, I hope. Are you sure he gave her that necklace, Mrs. Stanton? Well, I believe it was a gift. I've never inquired. I don't really care to know how these arrangements are worked out. In other words, your husband and Miss Evans... Let's not put it into words, if you don't mind. There'll be enough of that when the case comes up in court. When the case comes up, Mrs. Stanton, you'll have to prove it. And right now, your star witness, Miss Evans, is missing. Oh, not really missing. Unless something's happened to her. What? I don't know. Frankly, I don't really care. Park will find her sooner or later. Where? Probably at my husband's apartment. Oh, doesn't he live here? No, not regularly. Well, after meeting you, Mrs. Stanton, I can't say I blame him. <laughs> Mr. Stanton in? Yeah, he's in. O'Hara, what are you doing here, Captain? Come on in. I'm waiting for the medical examiner. Oh, Who's dead? Who do you think? Stanton lived here all alone. He might have had company. He did, a little earlier. There's a knife in his chest. Who put it there? I don't know. The murderer didn't leave his card. Uh, see the body? It might as well. Where is it? Right over there in the corner. And leave those chocolate-covered almonds alone. The place hasn't been gone over yet. When did all this happen? I don't know yet. I just got here a few minutes ago. And the body was right where it is now? I'm sure it hasn't moved. Hmm funny, isn't it? What? How a guy gets stabbed in the chest without putting up any kind of a fight. No sign of a struggle around here. So what? Nothing. I just don't like it, that's all. Why not? Because the usual place for a knife is in the back. The chest, you see it coming. You've got a chance to protect yourself. Not if you trust the person that's coming at you. Not if she's your sweetheart or something like that. Then you don't see the knife till it's too late. What makes you think it's his sweetheart? I don't. I don't even know if the man had one. Well, then stop putting a noose around her neck. Whose noose? What are you driving at? Nothing. Nothing. I, I just don't like your theory, O'Hara. Well, it's apparent he was killed by somebody he trusted. If it wasn't his sweetheart, then... Will you stop mentioning his sweetheart? Why? Is she a friend of yours or something? Don't be funny. Well, what are you mad at? What's eating you tonight? Your theories. Stanton could have been sitting in that chair when he was killed. The murderer could have moved the body to throw us off the track. I doubt it. The murderer didn't even have time to cover up the one clue that's going to convict him. What's that? A piece of string in the dead man's hand. You see how Stanton is holding out of it? String? Looks more like a strong silk thread. Probably something he tore from the murderer's clothing just before the knife went into his heart. You don't tear single threads from a person's clothing, O'Hara? Then what is it? I don't know. Let's open his hand and see. Wait a minute. You don't have to open it. I can see something between the fingers. What is it? A pearl. Miss Evans. Miss Evans, if you're in your room for the love of Mike, open up. Who is it? The fat man. Hello? Yes, open up, will you? Well, what's wrong? Funny. I've got to talk to you like a Dutch uncle. Oh, wait a minute. You can't come in. Shut up. You're in trouble, kid. I'm going to find out just how much. Where did you disappear to when I went after that guy that was following you? I uh, ran down the stairs. What? That's 
what I want to know. Why? To get away from him, of course. I knew you wouldn't let him follow me. I wish I had. Where did you go? Home. That's a lie. I've been calling up here all night. Well, um, I-, I stopped off for a bite to eat. Where? At Mr. Stanton's apartment? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, baby. Tell me the truth. I know half of it now. I want the other half or I'll call in the cops. What have I done that's wrong? Lots of things. Most of them aren't my business. But murder is. Murder? You heard me. Don't stand there looking from one of my eyes to the other. Even a lousy actress can look innocent. She's beautiful enough. Uh, Why do you keep saying I'm beautiful? Because you are. And if I weren't a man and a half, I'd take you in my arms and... And what? Never mind. Go ahead. Do it. Are you kidding? Do it. I want you to kiss me, darling. My name isn't darling. You never told me what it was. What can I call you? Nothing. You've got to believe me, darling. You've got to trust me. Why? Because I trust you. Do you uh, kiss me? Yes. You're awfully sweet when you want it. Who gave you that necklace you were wearing? What? Who gave it to you? Why aren't you wearing it now? I just took it off. Where is it? Don't you believe me? Where is it? I want to see it. I've got it. Where? Right here on my dress. Are you satisfied? Not yet. Is this the necklace you were wearing in my office? How many of these trinkets do you think I have? How do I know? There must be more where this came from. Who gave it to you? Mr. Stan. Why didn't you tell me that before? Because it was none of your business. Well, that's a good answer. Is it my business now? If you want it to be. How do you want it to be, Miss Evans? I want it to be Kathy, not Miss Evans. Okay, Kathy. I'll take your case. Have I got one? You will have. The cops will be swarming all over this place by tomorrow morning. Why? Don't worry. Everything will be all right. You didn't feel that way when you came in. When I came in, I never expected to find this string of pearls. Not in one piece, anyway. You mind if I take them? What for? I thought you trusted me. You still haven't answered my question. I need these pearls to make your alibi stand up, Kathy. Don't forget, I'm working for you, but the police aren't. Sure, these pearls were bought here, Mr. Werner? Quite sure. I matched them for Mr. Stanton myself. Uh, no chance of a duplicate set looking exactly like these? Very unlikely. Pearls are almost as individual as people. That's why they're so hard to match. I see. Uh, this is your clasp, of course. Oh, yes, it was made here. And the string? Oh, the string might be anybody's. There's nothing distinctive about a string. But the pearls are distinctive. Quite Uh, why did Mr. Stanton rearrange them? You mean they're not in the right order? Oh, the order is correct. But, uh, I only counted 18. What? The big one in the center is missing. Hello. Hello, Kathy. Oh, yes. This is the fat man. Do you want to swing for the murder of Mr. Stanton? No. Then do what I tell you. But I didn't kill him. Then why didn't you tell me you you knew he was dead, you two-faced... No. Shut up. I know you were in Stanton's apartment tonight. You had to be, or you wouldn't have had that necklace back. I don't know what you mean. Don't play dumb with me. You picked those pearls up off the floor and strung them together again. All except one. What? You stupid little fool. You left the most important one in the dead man's hand. Oh, no. Now, this is your last chance, Kathy. Meet me in my office in 15 minutes or I go to the police. But I... Be there. Yes? It's me, Kathy. Come in. Mr. Parker, what are you doing here? Waiting for you. 
The fat man sent for me. Where is he? He'll be back. He stepped out for a few minutes. Oh. Come on in. Don't be afraid. Well, I... Come on. The fat man wants me to show you something. What? Look over there on top of the desk. See it? What is it? A pearl. The largest one of a set. And what's it doing here? That's the fat man's business. He just wanted me to show it to you. Recognize it? I uh, don't know very much about pearls. Then you wouldn't be interested in buying it? Not from you. Who told you it was for sale? The fat man. He offered it to me for... Uh, what's the matter? Shh. There's a microphone hidden in this bowl of fruit. The fat man must be interested in your reactions. Where do the uh, wires go? Over here to the window and down the side of the building. He must be listening in another office. He won't listen anymore. Don't do that, you fool. Put that microphone down. Why? Because he'll know you smashed it. Do you want to get... Where's that pearl, Miss Evans? I beg your pardon. That pearl. You took it off the desk while I was at the window. Oh, you're mistaken. I haven't been near the desk. Come on. Give it to me or I'll search you for it. Let go of me. Not until you put that pearl back. Open your hand. No, Open I it, won't. I said. The fat man will kill me if you get away oh. with this. Oh. Oh. Come back here, you little devil. Not on your life. Just a moment, Miss Evans. Mrs. Stanton. Yes. I'll take that pearl, please. Oh. Look out. She's got a gun. Stay where you are, young lady. No, you can't make me. Stop. stop. <laughs> I told you to stop. You're wanted by the police for the murder of my husband. Get in the cab, Miss Evans. Where are you taking me? Get in. I'll watch her, Mrs. Stanton. Thank you, Mr. Parker. All right, driver. Hurry. Police headquarters. Right. Why don't you start? Got to wait for the light to change, lady. You got to wait for me, too. The fat man. Surprise. How do you feel, Kathy? Why, I'm all right. You better have somebody look at that shoulder. Franklin Hospital, driver. Make it snappy. Okay. Just a moment. We're taking her to police headquarters. With a fresh wound in her shoulder? She needs medical attention. But I Franklin said... Hospital, driver, and don't spare the horses. <laughs> How is she, Doc? Oh, she'll be all right. Bullet just grazed her shoulder. You're very lucky, Miss Evans. You mean you're very lucky? Don't you know it's against the law to go around shooting people? I couldn't let her get away with that pearl, could I? Why not? That isn't the one they found in your husband's hand. That's just a hunk of paste. But you told us all to come to your office so you could trap the one who tried to steal it. How did you know that? It was obvious. That's no excuse for shooting at her, Mrs. Stanton. Oh, I didn't really shoot. I tried to frighten her more than anything else. Well, in any case, I'll have to make a report to the police. Will you come with me, Mrs. Stanton? Certainly. You're a dead pigeon, Kathy. What do you mean? Even a bald-headed jury won't save you on this one. But I didn't kill him. I think you did. What's your vote, Parker? I won't say until I've heard all the facts. But you know all the facts. Didn't you follow her to Stanton's apartment late this afternoon? Yes, I did. Well, how long was she there? About 20 minutes. And she went right to the railroad station as soon as she left his apartment. But I didn't kill him. He was dead when I got there. Then why did you pick up the pearls and string them together again? Because I knew I was being framed. Somebody put that necklace in Mr. Stanton's hand. Mm, that's a good one. It's true. I didn't have the pearls when I went to his apartment. What? They were stolen from me this morning. Can you prove that? No. Can you prove it to me, Kathy? I don't know. Look at me. I'm looking. I didn't kill Mr. Stanton. I swear I didn't. That's not good enough, Kathy. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll help you get out of here. What? I'll give you a head start on the police. Don't be a fool. Mind your own business, Parker. This is my business. If she killed Stanton... Go on. Give her a break, will you? No. I'm just as responsible as you are. You can't make me a party to this. Then turn your back on it. You're crazy. It's a felony to assist a criminal. 
I'm going to call the police. Get away from that phone. For heaven's sake, use your head. They'll catch her anyway. Get away from that phone, I said. No, don't. No, no. I can't run away. You only make it look worse. Why, of course. The sooner we call the police, the better. Hello? Hello. Get me the police department, please. Yes, sir. You're not going to make that call, Parker. What? You're not going to make that call if I have to pick up one of these knives and jab it into your ribs. Yeah, put that down. Da- put that down, you fool. Now, you see, Parker... Even on short notice, a man reaches out for the murderer's hand, the hand with the knife. What? Don't you understand? When a man comes at you with a knife, you reach for his hand, not for his throat. What are you talking about? Stanton. He couldn't have torn those pearls off Kathy's neck. If she came at him with a knife, he'd have grabbed for her hand the way you grabbed mine. You mean she was framed? You guessed it. She was framed by a guy who knew every move she made. A guy who knew when he could steal that necklace and plant it in Stanton's hand at the most effective time. Who fits that description, Parker? Who knew every move Kathy made these last three days? Well, why are you looking at me? Because you're it. You wanted Stanton out of the way so you and Mrs. Stanton could get married and live on Stanton's dough. You're no private detective. I found that out five minutes after I met you. Drop that knife and stay where you are. I've got a gun. Look out, Kathy. You may use it. I will if you don't get out of my way. Hello? That phone's open, Parker. You're giving the police your whole confession. What? This! Oh! Take it easy, Captain. I'm bringing in a murderer. So you and Stanton were just good friends, hmm, Kathy? Mm hmm, that's right. Hmm. Must have thought an awful lot of his friends to give them pearl necklaces. Well, uh, I know you won't believe it, but he was like that. He once gave a surgeon a brand new car just for operating on his hand. What did uh, you do for the old boy? I went out with him, let him take me to shows and things. Well, here's where I get off. My home already? This is it. Night, Kathy. Oh, wait a minute. Am I ever going to see you again? I don't know. Why not? Don't you like me? Sure. I like all beautiful women. Trouble is, I fall in love with them. (laughs) And what's wrong with that? Having to fall out. So long, Kathy. Remember, nobody loves a fat man. Listen again next week at the same time when the American Broadcasting Company brings you another adventure of Dashiell Hammett's exciting new character, The Fat Man. Next week's story is called The Unfamiliar Face. And as The Fat Man says... Know a man's face and you know the man behind it. Line for line it tells the story of his life. From the women he's known to the crimes he's committed. Tonight's adventure of The Fat Man, played by J. Scott Smart, was directed by Robert Sloan. Bernard Green composed and conducted the original music. Hold on to your nerves. Next comes a guy who keeps busy chasing fugitives and frails. It's William Gargan as private detective Ross Dolan, shooting his way through the mystery thriller, I Deal in Crime. This is the American Broadcasting Company.